Thank you. Paula joined us for being with us here on Thursday, January 20th, 2022 for the Delta Protection Commission meeting. So with that, uh, we'll call a meeting to order. And uh, first order of business is due. Uh, we'll have the flag salute. And I'd ask Eric if you can lead us in that. I believe there's a flag up. And so if you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Yes. Uh, ready and salute. I pledge allegiance <laughs> to, the flag to the flag of the United, the United States, States of America, of America. And, and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation. Under God, indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you, commissioners. And uh, so, with that, um, again, once again, welcome. And I know we have a full agenda, and certainly uh, have a number of uh, guests and presenters that are joining us. And so, we welcome you all, and we get a chance to hear from you as we go forward. Let me uh, just uh, read into the record, though. Uh, uh, a, a notice and then we'll take the uh, roll call. Um, <clears throat> for the record, uh, as authorized by government code section 11133, we are meeting today remotely via Zoom. Members of the public can also join by telephone by calling 1-888-363-4734 and entering the conference code 388754. And I know all that they're on knew that already, but in the event that somebody is uh, tracking this, they're welcome to join us. This information is located on the top of the meeting agenda and all the meeting materials are located at the, uh, the uh, commission website. For public comment, please use the raise hand feature on Zoom. Uh, if you are joining by telephone, press uh, pound two to indicate you would like to make a public comment or a comment. And if you press pound two again, you will remove your raised hand. Uh, please wait to be recognized. And we wanna thank everyone for attending the meeting via Zoom and working. Here. Vice Chair Wynn. Here. Commissioner Viegas. Present. Commissioner Burgess. Commissioner Steele. Paroli. Here. Commissioner. Uh, effective uh, uh, December 31st of 2021. And so we do have a vacancy in that slot, as I understand it. Um, um, let me ask uh, Eric, is there any indication where we might have a um, have that slot filled? I, I you know no, we we will just await word from the uh, the speaker of the assembly. Okay, very good. Okay, well, thank you very much. And then without keep moving down the agenda then unless there's anything else on that, I see I can't see the hand, so you jump right in, Eric, if I get to go in here and you see folks that wish to um, um, address um, <clears throat> any item. So we're going to come to time for public comment on three for any item that's not on the agenda. And uh, of course, as we do with most of our comments, those are limited to three minutes. So let me ask uh, our clerk and executive director, are there any hands up for items on the agenda? Thank you. At the moment, we don't have any hands showing. Yeah, and uh, M Madam Clerk, I, I do note that uh, Commissioner Paul Steele has joined us by telephone. Commissioner Steele, uh, can you hear us and can you say hello so we can get your volume checked? Yeah, uh, you, it's Paul Steele. Anyway, uh, I might be going in on Zoom anyway. I think I might already figured it out, but anyway. Okay. Well, if you do, you'll want to mute your phone. Otherwise, you'll hear an echo. But we we hear you loud and clear over the telephone. So thank you for joining. Okay. Can you see me at all on the uh, Zoom meeting? No, you're you're joined by telephone now. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Eric. All right. Uh, if we have no. Um, no hands up on items not on the agenda for public comment, then we will uh, continue to move down the agenda to um, next item, item four, which is a, a chair's report on Delta Stewardship Council activities. Uh, I know we have uh, Stewardship Council uh, staff uh, on the line on some other items, potentially um, 
later in the agenda, and we will have a matter that uh, we'll um, ask for the commission's input uh, to uh, item that is pending uh, at the uh, stewardship council level, but will not be brought up at, the, at next week's meeting. Uh, the <clears throat> stewardship council will come into session uh, next next Thursday, January 27th, and. Uh, just by way of note, I know the annual report uh, will be presented. Um, uh, some ongoing work, obviously, under the Delta Science uh, program. Um, I think the water master is scheduled to be um, with us. Uh, Michael George, who's spoken to the commission, uh, will uh, be with us to give us an update. And, um, uh, I, and there'll be some uh, uh, some other presentations as well. So that's all I had. Uh, this ever meeting was a fairly light as agenda goes, but there's a pretty full year for both the council as well as uh, obviously the commission. So unless anybody had any other questions or comments, that's all I have for a report. I mean, any hands, Stacy, or any questions or comments? I'm currently seeing no hands raised. Okay. All right. Well, very good. So we'll keep that report brief. And uh, with that, then uh, move to my colleagues under item five, uh, commissioner comments and announcements and uh, uh, would turn to my colleagues and uh, see if we have any reports from uh, commission members. Great, we have uh, Commissioner Agar and then Commissioner Vogel. Okay, well, Commissioner Agar, you typically have a report and I know there's a lot of a lot of things going on in the Caltrans world, so uh, I'll turn to you first, and then we'll come um, to uh, fellow commissioner. So, Dennis. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I will try to keep my uh, updates and announcements brief. Uh, I want to first thank Eric for sending out the updated uh, construction map in the Delta region. So hopefully everybody received our, our latest uh, uh, map of all the planned construction and ongoing construction projects uh, here in the Delta. I also just, uh, if everyone doesn't know already, um, Secretary uh, Kim, David Kim has now uh, stepped down in that his current position. And Alyssa Cano, who's the undersecretary, is the acting uh, secretary uh, for uh, the transportation agency at this time. Uh, also within Caltrans, uh, regarding our leadership changes, uh, it's not really a change, but a permanent uh, appointment for our chief deputy director. That's Mike Kiever. Um, he was acting in that capacity. I believe he was actually sworn in uh, today uh, for a, for that permanent position. Uh, other things, uh, as as I mentioned in the past, are our Clean California um, efforts. Uh, the local grant projects are due this February first. Just as a reminder uh, for those who are planning to submit applications in regards to our Delta state beautification project, I want to thank Eric for working with uh, my uh, coordinator, Sam Sherman, on that. Our state uh, beautification project, to let everybody know, has been approved by our headquarters folks. Uh, that's for $430,000 uh, for both capital and support. And uh, those, that project, the Delta signage plan uh, is, is planned to be completed by no later than June of 2023. Uh, the only other uh, couple of other updates I wanted to state is that our, our District 10, we are um, kicking off our, uh, what we call pedestrian and pedestri pedestrian and bike advisory committee. Uh, and that's gonna be uh, held in February 9th. Uh, and I can send out uh, the website and the link uh, to um, uh, Stacy, I believe, um, if anybody's interested in, in that um, advisory committee. Uh, also, uh, I do want to say uh, thanks for allowing District 10 Caltrans to participate in the climate adaption strategy under the Delta Steward Council. Uh, so I want to make sure that um, uh, and I acknowledge that. And last, um, uh, District 10 uh, is working with our headquarters environmental uh, office in regards to a regional advanced mitigation needs assessment. And uh, we'll be uh, going out for circulation uh, for public and agency review. And we'll make sure that um, 
the Delta committees are part of that distribution for, for their review. Uh, I will end right there, um, Mr. Chair. Thank you for the time and opportunity. Well, th thank you, Mr. Agar. And I, and I wanted to note that um, uh, I know there was a very, an additional safety project on Highway 12, that section um, between the Rebus Bridge and, and uh, the McCollumy, particularly at the Jackson Flu intersection that uh, worked with your, your Caltrans representatives uh, to uh, try to uh, basically, uh, I think, uh, cur curb uh, literally otherwise uh, some of the illegal passing and obviously some of the serious accidents uh, even recent ones uh, uh, in and around that location and i believe last week um uh, installed uh, some sure curb at the left turn pockets to reduce areas where folks could you know illegally pass even though it's been striped and signed appropriately and i just want to note that's ongoing safety work to try to provide for safe movements recognizing the volume and sometimes the speeds depending upon the traffic volume that and some of the conflicts that have occurred out there. So I uh, just wanted to pass on thanks. I know that uh, there's citizenry uh, uh, use that regularly, but certain I've heard from a couple of folks in the uh, Delta region there that they were pleased to see that measure go in place and hopefully it'll make for a safer movement along there. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'll definitely take that back to the team. Okay, very good. Okay, commissioners, any, um, Questions, uh, Eric did send out the list. We see the construction projects, and I think as noted by Commissioner Agar, there's some other opportunities to participate. So any questions or comments uh, any commissioner would like to make? Commissioner Villegas would like to um, address that item. Sure. Yeah, just a question, and maybe there isn't an answer, uh, Eric. The, uh, the report that was just provided, given the uh, funding for the signage in, in the Delta, I, I know one of the areas that has been raised repeatedly, and that is, crossing the Freeport Bridge there, there is a whole host of signs that are just sort of littered right on the, the highway, uh, making the turn across the Freeport Bridge coming into Clarksburg. And I wondered if, if, if that would be, funding would be available to do something to sort of coordinate efforts there so that there's directional signs and also business opportunity signs, but kind of coordinated it so it's not a bit of a mess or is that something completely different? And if you don't have the answer now, I can take it offline, but I'm, I'm looking for ways in which we can help kind of clean up what looks like a bit of a mess coming across the Freeport Ridge there into Clarksburg, but thank you. Yeah, we, we perhaps we should talk offline. Um, we, it still remains to be defined what these wayfinding signs will look like and where they will direct people to, but that's certainly a, a, a possibility to um, address that particular location there that you mentioned. And, and Commissioner Vegas, this is uh, Commissioner Igar, and just want to acknowledge what you stated. And again, my team is willing to work with uh, Eric and, and see what we can do in that specific location. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, Oscar. Thanks, <clears throat> Dennis. Um, other commissioners? We have Commissioner Vogel on what I believe is a separate topic. Yes. Okay, very good. Okay, we'll go to Nancy. Uh, Commissioner Vogel, go ahead. Thank you, Chair Natoli. I just wanted to let everybody know that the Natural Resources Agency this month brought on board its first ever Deputy Secretary for Access. We, we um, hired a woman named Catherine Toy, who comes with a great deal of experience. And in, um, she came to us from the Golden Gate National Parks Conservancy, where she was overseeing visitor services and youth and education and, and, and community engagement. And now at the Natural Resources Agency, she's going to help oversee, there was a billion with a B, a billion dollars in the last year's budget to um, in, for investments in access related infrastructure and programs, and uh, she's going to help oversee that. And I want to make sure that I get the chance to connect Catherine when she gets her feet um, and get settled in the new job with the Delta Protection Commission staff that are working on the Delta National Heritage Area and the Great California Delta Trail Master Plan, just so she's got that um, on her horizon. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. And that's, uh, you know, congratulations. Uh, uh, to her and uh, uh, you know, something a, a big job, but the uh, teacher, you know, uh, thinking about both of the efforts, the heritage area as well as the trail, and how that might uh, dovetail into 
you know, what her, what the responsibilities are and how it might be helpful to the advancing some of, you know, those activities. So thank you for, for that. And tell her she's welcome to join us at the, at the commission meetings if she'd like to. I'm sure she has, has a full plate. But uh, again, thanks for that uh, announcement. Okay. Uh, anyone else? Sorry to tell you there are currently no hands raised. Okay. All right. Again, sorry for the awkwardness of this. I know it takes a little more time, just, but um, with that then, okay, well, thanks to fellow commissioners. Uh, um, again, appreciate the efforts uh, on many different fronts. So with that, let's, um, uh, oh, let me ask, is there any public comment on this item? We have no hands raised. Okay, very good. Okay, then that takes us down to our consent agenda. We have a one item consent agenda, which is the item number six, consideration of the approval of the November 18th 2021 meeting minutes and those were distributed. So turn to commissioners to see if there was any modifications or corrections uh, to the minutes. And if not, then a motion would be in order and we'll uh, call for public comment as well. M move approval, Biegas, if they're ready. In Burgess. Okay, it's been moved and seconded, Biegas and Burgess. Um, any commissioner comments? There are no hands raised. All right, any public talk. comment? That's clear? Secure to change. I'm sorry, I missed that. Uh, okay. Was there any public comment? No, there are no hands raised from the public as well. Okay, very good. All right, then we'll call for the vote. Uh, if you'll roll call, please, uh, clerk. One, count Thank you. Me... One moment, I need One to minute. pause or oh, mute somebody's phone. And if another staff yeah, we'll... member or Justin can take care of that so we can move forward on this vote. Thank you. Chair Natoli. Aye. Vice Chair Wynn. Yes. Commissioner Viegas. Aye. Commissioner Burgess. Yes. Commissioner Fuller. Aye. Oh, there. Sorry, there's some background noise. Commissioner Fuller. Aye. Commissioner Steele. Aye. Commissioner Nakanishi. Aye. Commissioner Paroli. Yes. Commissioner Slater. Aye. Commissioner Agar. Aye. Commissioner Vogel. Aye. Commissioner Bush. Aye. Thank you. Are there any commission members that came in after a roll call that I haven't called? Great. Chair Natoli, we have 12 yeses, zero noes, and zero abstains. Okay, it sounds like a unanimous vote. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And uh, with that, we'll move into our regular agenda. And first item up is uh, item seven, which is the executive director's report. Turn to you, Eric. Great, thank you, Mr. Chair and commission members. Uh, I'll hit on a few points in my written report. The first is, uh, the Delta conveyance project or the Delta tunnel project. And I just wanted to announce that the final meeting of the stakeholder engagement committee, what we call the SEC that was advising the uh, tunnel conveyance design authority. They met on December 8th and they will not uh, continue with that committee as the engineering has been completed for the purposes of the, the evening convened our we convened our 2022 program with a Zoom seminar on January 7th. We have 13 participants in this sixth cohort of the Delta Leadership Program. Our next seminar will be in early February. And the final seminar, along with a concluding reception, will be on Friday, April 22nd. The reception will be at Bogle Winery in Clarksburg. We will be sending a special invitation out to all of the commission members. We hope you can mark that on your calendar for the early, uh, late afternoon uh, from about 5 to 7 p.m. on Friday, April 22nd. We'd love to see you there. And special thanks to Chair Natoli for joining us at our first seminar, which was on Zoom on January 7th. Um, Moving on to commission staffing, I'm really pleased to be able to make this announcement. 
as we welcome three new staff members, all of whom are on the uh, meeting today, even though one of them has not yet officially joined us. But starting out with Claire Cooey, Claire joined us on January 10th as an Associated Governmental Program Analyst. She'll assist with administrative contract and grant support. She comes to us from the California Department of Managed Health Care and is a Delta enthusiast. So there's Claire. Welcome aboard, Claire. We're really pleased to have, have her join our team. Our second new addition uh, just joined us today. His name is Morgan Matz. He's our new office technician. He'll be handling our front office work. And we extend a special uh, thank you to uh, or a special welcome, I should say, to Morgan. And then finally, Kirsten Pringle will be joining us on February 2nd. There's Kirsten, hello there. As Senior Environmental Planner, she'll be leading land use review and regional economic development efforts for the commission. Uh, she currently works with the Stantec Consulting Firm. Uh, she knows her way around the Delta as well, and we're really pleased to have her join the team. Uh, Mr. Chair and Commission members, I have to give a special huge thank you to Assistant Executive Director Natasha Nelson. She's our lead on recruitment, involved in all the hiring. She'll be supervising these new hires. And I just, I can't say how thrilled I am that we have such a great caliber of a cohort joining us as new staff members. This will bring us to full staffing. It's been a while since we've been there. We want to stay there for a good long while. So no one go anywhere. Oh, wait, I'm going somewhere, but not for a while. So um, anyway, welcome to the new team members. Um, not in my report, but what I wanted to also announce to you all is that the governor's proposed fiscal year 22-23 budget was released about a week ago. It includes a continuation of commission funding, no big changes in that regard. And finally, I'll be working with our chair and Commissioner Bush to present them with a proposed duty statement for the executive director position. Um, based on their input, I will be working with our team at Department of General Services to get that duty statement finalized, to get a, a job description out to the world and my expectation is that at the March 17th commission meeting, I'll be asking, <coughs> excuse me, asking or at least recommending that the commission form an executive director screening committee to be able to review the applicants and determine who you wish to uh, interview uh, for the position. So more to come on that. And in addition, a more extensive project update, list of upcoming events, commission budget overview, and metrics from our website and social media are included in my written report. And unless there are any questions, Mr. Chair, that concludes my report. Okay, Gary, uh, questions? There are currently no hands raised. Okay, well, thank you, Stacy. Um, I would just join Eric, certainly and welcome our uh, new complement of staff members uh, to uh, Claire, Morgan, and. Uh, Kirsten, uh, welcome, and uh, we're glad you've joined the uh, ranks of the commission staff. Thank you, Natasha, for your uh, uh, good work in helping to recruit and uh, seek out uh, uh, folks that uh, will assist us in our in our work here at the commission. So, again, congratulations to all. Um, with that, then, are there any public comments regarding the ED's report? No hands raised. Okay, well, very good. Well, well, thank you, Eric. And uh, again, uh, prelude of some things yet to come and uh, um, um, off to a good start in uh, early 2022 here. Okay, uh, if nothing further then, we'll move down to the uh, Delta Protection Advisory uh, Committee report. Um, and just as we've welcomed some uh, new folks on board, we're going to uh, uh, thank and uh, give best wishes to some departing members from the DPAC as well as welcome the new chair uh, so, uh, Eric, I don't know if you have any opening comments, but I know we have Mark Pruner, who's our outgoing DPAC chair, um, and uh, Mariah Looney, uh, who's the uh, incoming chair. And I would just note, too, that I, um, both Mr. Pruner and uh, Barbara Daly, uh, who I think served as vice chair for a number of years, uh, and Mark 
I think had seven years uh, uh, on the uh, DPAC. Uh, both were very diligent turning in the reporting to the commission and doing the uh, work that the uh, DPAC uh, was charged with. And we certainly appreciate the, uh, their longtime participation and and I think their ongoing, obviously, uh, uh, efforts to you know promote and support uh, activities in the Delta. So unless Eric, you had anything, I will turn to uh, to Mark and Mariah. Yes, please. Okay, go ahead, Mark. I don't know if you kicked the thought from Mariah, but it, it, the floor is yours. Mark, you're currently muted. I am not muted. Yeah, there we can you go. Hear we can hear you. No, I chose that I'm on. We can hear you, Mark. Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, I just want, Mr. Chair, thank you very much. And members of the commission, thank you so much. It's been almost uh, seven, seven and a half, almost eight years that I've been um, honored to chair the Delta Protection Advisory Committee. As I've told um, many people, and I've talked about the committee of 15 folks, many of those folks might be suing each other outside the room, might be having various public or private fights or disagreements, but inside the room, I think we all agreed at all times that we're going to find solutions together in both our advice and the initiatives that we brought forward to the commission to find common ground for the good of the Delta. And I think, I think we did that. Um, and certainly there was no yelling in any of the meetings. So I take that as, um, as, as a good thing. I'm glad that Mariah Looney was um, elected. She was elected without opposition. She comes from Restore the Delta. And beyond that, I don't want to take any thunder from her. And uh, thank you all again. I really appreciate the opportunity to serve the commission and uh, and what I think is an important role in, in helping all of us in, as a team work for the best interests of the Delta. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Okay, Mariah. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, hi, everyone. Um, thank you for everything, Mark. I really appreciate it. I have some big shoes to fill. Um, my name is Mariah Looney. I'm the campaign coordinator at Restore the Delta. Um, a lot of you know who we are, so I won't go into any details about that. Um, sixth generation Stocktonian, now living in downtown Sacramento. Um, I love the Delta. I am a, a graduate alum of the Delta Leadership Program. And I am very, very excited for um, just to serve this year on, on DPAC. I see that um, our vice chair, Russ Ryan, is here also. Um, we're both new in, the, in these roles. Um, and so we are just really looking forward to um, 2022. And um, Eric, I believe you've shared the report, uh, the DPAC report with them, with the, with the commission. Sure. So um, this is my first time. I might be a little, <laughs> little, um, I am new at this. Shall I just read just a little piece of the report? Yeah, maybe just a brief um, sure. summary about the actions taken. And this is always an opportunity if there are any specific recommendations that were directed to the commission, which I don't think there were from the early January meeting, but this is just an opportunity to share those. Sure, yeah. So um, as as Eric and, and Mark pointed out, we did have some resignations, or I'm sorry, Chair Natoli pointed out we did have some resignations, um, but we also received an update on the proposed Delta as place survey um, of Delta residents from Delta Stewardship Council staff. And we received a report on state lands commission abandoned commercial vessel removal plans, which I see is in the agenda here, um, and just an update on staff activities. So um i'm really excited to hear about staffing stuff um just a little bit about what um our what dpac wants to focus on we really want to um is in regards to the vision 2030 strategic plan um this year we really want to focus on um oh oh Oh, Dawn, sorry, um, which is ensuring consistent, productive, proactive co communication between and among Delta interests and decision makers, um, as well as support an active and engaged Delta Protection Advisory Committee structure, including utilizing expert work groups um, to provide recommendations. We have a lot of 
um, vacancies that will be opening up because of the resignations. And I look forward to um, filling those vacancies with people who want the same things that we all want. So um, I think that, that I'll stop there. And thank you so much for your time. I'm looking forward to this year. Well, thank you. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Chair, I if, if I could jump in, I just want to give my special appreciation to Mark Pruner. We've worked together for many years. It's been a very productive working relationship. I know that'll continue with, uh, with Mariah as well. Um, Mark will be remaining on the committee. He's not leaving the committee. He just uh, elected to step back from his chair responsibilities. But uh, I, I do appreciate that. And at the same time, I'm excited about the opportunity to work with Mariah moving forward. Well, thank you, Eric. And, and I certainly would echo those comments and uh, um, you know, congratulations, uh, uh, Mariah. And uh, thank you for your report this evening. And uh, thank you, Mark, uh, for your continuing uh, service uh, on the DPAC and for your years of service as chair. Thanks to Barbara Daly and to Lindsay Levy, both of you who are leaving the, um, uh, <clears throat> the advisory committee. But uh, as Mariah very aptly said, we give us an opportunity for others to step forward and to continue the good work uh, of the uh, DPAC and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, help the commission in its efforts uh, as we work to um, uh, address uh, issues and voice, um, uh, you know, the good work of the uh, commission on matters affecting the Delta. So, again, many thanks and I look forward to your continued reports. And certainly, uh, uh, I think, as you said, uh, Mariah, with, you know, full staffing and, you know, some of that staff support certainly supports the. A deep act uh, work as well. So uh, again, looking forward to a very productive year. And we thank you for for being here this evening and for your service and uh, for all of your fellow your fellow committee members as well. So thank you so okay. much. Okay, uh, you bet. Uh, commission members, any uh, additional comments uh, or any questions of uh, Mariah? Yes, Oscar Viegas. Uh, sorry, Commissioner Viegas oh. has his hand raised. <laughs> Thank okay. you, Mr. Chair. I just want to echo uh, your your sentiments and thanking or congratulating, first of all, Mariah on the new position. I have no doubt Mark will serve as, as a great mentor uh, for her moving forward. But then also wanted to thank Mark uh, for his commitment. And Mark, uh, he, when he commits, he commits. And he always comes prepared. He's always making sure that everybody is well informed of the issues uh, and the recommendations and suggestions. Mark, uh, there's nothing more precious than time. And Mark has certainly given his fair share of the time. So I want to say Thank you, Mark, publicly. Uh, thank you profusely for your work and your commitment to the Delta and your commitment to, you know, good steward of, of the work at hand. And so, so I wanted to just say again, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vegas. Thank you. Thanks, Oscar. Well said. Anyone else? Commissioner Burgess. Yeah. All right. uh, Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you, Don. Um, I just, uh, Mark, I've learned so much from you. So I just want to say thank you for all you do. And um, and then Mariah, thank you for stepping up. It's a, it's a commitment and it's a really important role. And Mark, you've done a great job. And again, like I said, I've learned a lot from you and I appreciate you, um, you're all in on this. So thank you. And uh, my, my colleagues have said everything else, but thank you for stepping up. Thank you, Commissioner. Thanks, Diane. And, and I guess congratulations to Russ Ryan too. So if uh, in the event that the Mariah has, has to miss a meeting or something like that, Russ, you're, you're uh, next in line. So appreciate your willingness to serve as the vice chair as well. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You bet. Okay, uh, anyone else? There are no other hands raised. Okay, very good. How about any public comments, Stacey? I see no public comment either. All righty, well, very good. Okay, kudos to all. Uh, we uh, <clears throat> welcome you here this evening, and uh, we look forward to continuing good work uh, in the upcoming year. So I know the leadership uh, is there to help us accomplish our goals. So, all righty. With that, then, um, if there's nothing further, we will uh, move down to um, item number nine. Uh, and I know we have some presenters, and I think we have some guests on the phone as well. And uh, I'm going to have. Uh, Eric to kick this off, but this is the report uh, on the California State Lands Commission ban and commercial vessel removal plan efforts. And there's been some activity in recent days. And I know that uh, certainly Commissioner Bush has shared with us, uh, <clears throat> you know, some of the activity. And I know Vicki Caldwell's here, and I think uh, other representatives from public agencies uh, 
uh, are are on the line, and so we'll uh, take the presentation and then uh, welcome comments uh, from presenters as well as the commission members and any members of the public. So there's some um, exciting activity in this area that uh, hopefully will result in some major cleanup and uh, environmental improvements uh, uh, for the Delta. So with that, Eric, I'll turn to you. Actually, I'm going to turn it over to Commissioner Bush, and he, I think, has okay. a few words to say uh, before uh, the, the presentation kicks off. Okay, great. Okay, Commissioner Bush, Brian, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Eric. And I'm sure I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give a little introduction to this while they're setting up the video for uh, Vicki Caldwell, who will be giving the presentation. But uh, I just wanted to start by saying this is something we've been working on for a long, long time. Um, uh, you may or may not know um, abandoned and derelict vessels throughout the state are a problem and an issue in terms of debris in the water and contamination and just blocking navigation. Um, they're especially a problem throughout the Delta. It's always an uphill battle fighting it. Um, there is some resources and money that's been available for years for recreational vessels through the Department of Boating and Waterways, but there's never been any money for commercial vessels, which are exponentially more expensive to kind of dispose of and get rid of. Um, I don't want to steal all of Vicky's thunder, um, I'll, and I'll try and keep it short here, but um, we've been working on this for quite a while. There was some legislation that was passed a decade or so ago, and then um, I would just want to really call out Assemblymember Frazier and his staff and the role that they've played throughout this whole process over the past decade even, but in, um, in 2018, they had a bill that led to a report that um, one of our staff members, Ken Foster, essentially wrote, who's on the line today. And then um, that resulted in this last year and us getting about $12 million in funding. And um, what you're going to hear today is kind of the start of us working on an implementation plan. You're hearing it before our commission. We're going to be presenting kind of just an update on where we're at to our commission in February. So, um, and, but um, I just wanted to also introduce a couple of our staff members. We basically don't have staff for this, but um, we got three people. Um, one of them is Andrew Kirshen, who's our attorney, who's on the line. Um, and Ken Foster, who I mentioned earlier, who's a staff in, um, in our land management division. And then Vicki Caldwell, who will be giving the presentation. And, um, Vicki is really one of these unsung heroes in state. She's uh, one of them, um, and, and it may sound like hyperbole, but it's not, but perhaps one of the, the best public servants in the state and the amazing work she's done in cleaning up all things all over the state. Um, she's doing some amazing work in Crockett right now. She's done a lot of work in uh, the Sandy Beach area in Vallejo and Puerto Madera Creek. Um, and she's working on getting the Richmond Point Orient here in Richmond out of Chevron. But uh, lots of things you will never notice, all the Delta Marinas, <laughs> trying to keep them in compliance. Um, the list goes on and on and on. But um, I'll turn it over to Vicki and she can go from here. Well, thank you, Brian, and welcome, Vicki. And thank you for helping keep California clean. Uh, that's uh... Quite a quite a a task, but it sounds like you've made some significant contributions to that. So, Vicki, we'll turn it over to you. Thank you all. Good afternoon, members of the Delta Protection Commission and guests. My name is Vicki Caldwell. I am a public land management land manager in the land management division and a part of the state lands abandoned vessel team with Andrew Kirshen and Ken Foster. I'll be presenting information on our abandoned and derelict vessel removal limited implementation plan. Next slide. I would like to first start with a little background. For years, the commission has advocated for a state level program to address abandoned and commercial and derelict vessels, CADVs in state waters. A significant step was taken in 2011 when the legislature passed SB 595 and Public Resources Code 6302 and vested the commission with the power to declare certain vessels abandoned property 
and to take title and remove and dispose of them. Next slide. In 2018, the legislature passed former assembly member Fraser's SB 2441, which directed the commission to prepare a plan for the removal of commercial abandoned vessels in the Sacramento San Joaquin Delta. The commission adopted this commercial abandoned vessel removal program in June of 2019. At that time, the legislature did not provide funding to implement the plan. As you all know, the Budget Act of 2021 allocated $12 million to the commission to remove CADVs from the Sacramento San Joaquin Delta region. The implementation program for the limited funding will include the following. First, a field survey which will identify the current number and location of CADVs and ground truth existing data. Staff proposes to seek commission authorization at its February 25th, 2022 meeting to solicit bids for a survey from qualified contractors. The survey will seek to verify, among other aspects, the physical location, the characteristics, the current condition, and any other relevant significant conditions or physical factors that would assist with prioritization of CADVs in state waters. Staff proposes that the survey be limited to the legal delta in order to for for focus program efforts. The contractor will also attempt to gather information such as vessel, vessel name, registration number, and physical information that can be used to locate owners or responsible parties to re for removal notification and cost recovery. The survey would use as a starting point, the commission's existing CIS database of CADVs partly developed from the 2017 aerial reconnaissance by the California Department of Fish and Wildlife's Office of Spill Prevention and Response. Next, vessel prioritization. Following the survey completion, the contractor in cons consultation with commission staff and partner agencies will prioritize CADVs and CADV sites for abatement. Prioritization will be based on the criteria developed and described in the ADV plan. This will focus removal on the most environmentally hazardous CADVs or those that pose the greatest danger to the public and to navigation. Economies of scale where mobilization equipment and disposal cost savings can be realized will also be considered for ADV clusters. Environmental justice and tribal considerations will be incorporated into prioritization consistent with the commission's tribal consultation and environmental justice policies. Finally, a California Environmental Quality Act CEQA analysis, the commission's division of environmental planning and management will select a consultant and coordinate the preparation of a programmatic environmental analysis. This will be a high level analysis, examining the diversity of habitat and species that exist in the Delta, as well as the variety of CADVs and potential removal and disposal methods. Staff believes that a programmatic level analysis expected to be a mitigated negative declaration will suffice to launch the removal program. Environmental justice and engagement and tribal consultation will be performed on each removal project as needed when the sp specifics of the project are known. Next slide. Staff anticipates implementation of the CADV program elements 
described above in spring 2022, following commission authorization for both CADV program and bid solicitation for survey contractors. Staff also anticipates survey, prioritization, and sequel analysis will be completed by the end of 2022 and early 2023. Staff will then develop an abatement schedule. The schedule will be based on prioritization, partner agency consultation, additional environmental analysis and permitting as required, in-water work windows, legal process, staff contracting capacity, environmental justice considerations, and available funding. The abatement schedule may be revised periodically if vessel prioritization and funding changes occur. Legal due process noticing for the first targeted CADVs would begin in spring or summer 2023 with abatement action starting shortly thereafter. Staff expects the limited CADV program to continue for approximately three to five years until the one-time budget allocation is exhausted. Next slide. As an update on a successful story we had over the weekend is our Tug Valiant. On October 21st, 2021, staff received approval from the commission to re re remove two large commercial tugs in Seven Mile Slough in the Delta using the $12 million fund. On Wednesday, January 12th, one of those tugs, the Valiant, a World War II steel tugboat broke free from its moorings and began to drift in the navigation channel in the San Joaquin River. An incident command team was set up with the California State Lands Commission, Sacramento and San Joaquin Sheriff offices, California Fish and Wildlife Office of Spill Prevention and Response, U.S. Coast Guard, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and the U.S. EPA to stabilize and demolish the vessel. Approximately 2,500 gallons of fuel and oil were removed from the vessel while the Valiant was still floating. The Valiant was then safely removed from the water at Mare Island on Saturday, January 15th. The agency partners will abate the remaining hazardous substance, substances and scrap the vessel in the coming weeks. The commission will absorb approximately $100,000 abatement costs for the Valiant. Next slide. Here's the photo, um, and this shows the amazing work that can be done when agency partners work together. The Valiant um, is before the emergency as it's floating in the waterway, and then it's being towed by the Army Corps. Next slide. Here we have the Valiant removed from the water by Lynn Marine on Mare Island. And it's just amazing. This tug is 107 tons. Next slide. Thank you, and that concludes my presentation. We are available to answer any questions you may have. Well, thank you, Vicki, for your presentation and certainly Brian for the introduction and want to compliment you and certainly your team that's with us this evening, Andrew and Kenneth. And uh, uh, I know we have others on the phone. So. Um, how do we want to proceed with this, uh, Eric? Uh, I'll take commission comments and questions, and certainly kudos to all who were involved in the very recent removal of one of many vessels. Um, and then uh, I, I think we have some others on the line that may want to comment as well. So, um, yeah, yeah else, I think we uh, could we could start if there's any uh, commissioner questions. I, I don't see any hands raised, but if any commissioners want to jump in without their hands raised, this would be a good time. Eric, just as, this is Viegas. My apologies for jumping in, but for some reason my video has been disabled. It says the the host has disabled it. My apologies. Oh, okay. We'll get checked on that. Sorry about that. Thanks for letting us know, Commissioner Viegas. But I did, I did want to just make a quick comment, if I could. Please. 
Yeah, first of all, thank you for the report. I love the fact that we're actually kind of making some progress in this arena. This has been neglected for quite some time. So thank you for that. The only comment that I would make in addition to the work that's already being done and, and it may already be happening, and that is communicating with the marinas, the marina operators, uh, because they oftentimes know when these derelict vessels are sitting in their marinas and are likely to be cut loose. There's a lot of different ways that happens, but I would just, I would offer that as a comment, something that I've, Got received in terms of feedback uh, for uh, for purposes of trying to you know continue to keep the vessels the, the derelict ones out of our waterways. So thank you. Thanks, Oscar. Good point. Any others? There are no other hands raised. And Commissioner Vegas, we're working on your video um, issue. I'm not sure what's going on there. This is uh, Commissioner Burgess. I have the same issue. Hmm. Just imagine that big old tugboat's out of the water, though. <laughs> okay. That's right. Um, but we're working on the video. Uh, any other comments regarding Vicki's report? Um, if not, then if there's no commission comments or questions, let me turn to uh, public comment. We have some folks on the line. There are no public hands raised. Okay. I have a question and I don't know how to raise my arm. This is Jim Paroli. Great, go ahead, Commissioner go ahead, Paroli. <clears throat> the phone number. So how to get a, a, a copy of what vessels have already been identified if that uh, data is available. I, I can comment on that, Eric. Please. Um, yeah, this is Commissioner Bush. Uh, we're that's part of the implementation plan, so we'll um, we're we're going to be doing a full kind of uh, identification or reconnaissance of what's been identified. So um, that's part of the the funds are going to be used to that. So we know the universe of what we're dealing with within the Delta. And then from there, um, we're working with a bunch of other groups to kind of prioritize, you know, which ones are make the most sense to remove based on various criteria as we'll develop it. Um, you know, if there's economies of scale where we can get different ones out, ones that are floating, like these two that were identified and we got um, approval for, were two floating among, I think, five or six um, vessels. And you know it's exponentially cheaper to get them out that way, and that's a better use of our money. We're also partnering with Army Corps and with U.S. Coast Guard and U.S. EPA. Um, there's a whole network of people that are involved um, in trying to do that. But the the inventory and the identity of what we'll remove is is what we're hoping to get to by about a year from now. Gotcha. And so so we can use it. again. Twelve million is not going to go very far. <laughs> This is a, a, a lot, uh, these are not expensive to, to remove. This one actually worked out in an emergency situation. So we're actually gonna be saving a lot of money on this because it broke off or somebody broke it off last week. And uh, we just had all the coordination with everybody else and it worked out smoothly that it didn't sink somewhere else or hit something else. But uh, well, thank, thank you for that and good job, that was great. Thanks, Brian. Uh, Commissioner Paroli, any other commissioner? There are no other um, hands raised. Oh. Okay, thanks, Daisy. I, I just wanted to ask uh, Brian or Vicki, so uh, as you're doing the work that is outlined uh, you know, leading up to obviously a coordinated approach and recognizing that 12 million will only go so far, I assume though, if you have an urgent or emergent, emergent situation, like occurred this past weekend and again you know kudos to all the partners who you know coordinated as you noted uh commissioner bush you have the authorities uh with the commission's uh, approval to um intervene before you get to the point of you know, including you know both the survey and then obviously a work plan is is, is that accurate 
Um, not yet. Um, that we got really lucky. We had identified these two tugs, and uh -huh. it just uh, had them approved independently because we wanted to get jump started on the money that we got. We saw these as a great opportunity um, outside of the larger plan of what to do with all the money. We thought these were some that we had been working on for a while that we had coordinated with other entities and we were aware of them. And we thought, let's get these two out, at least take advantage of the money here and get these two out. And with whatever's remaining, we'll um, start to prioritize. But um, we, we got a little bit lucky that that happened and we already had approval. So when it happened this week, we could, you know, we already knew we were gonna be participating in this. We just had to coordinate with the other ones and and get it out but um yeah there was a lot of ups and downs going back and forth and what was going to happen and who was going to participate and a lot of games of chicken going on so it was quite interesting but uh, we, we really just kind of lucked out in that respect for this one but yeah. other ones if it was an emergency situation we would probably get involved and take care of that quickly if we could okay that's good to know we had, yeah i would assume that'd be the case obviously you People have contingency plans for things like that, but where you're, you know, you're going to have a, you know, a, a number of months here of, you know, working through uh, the outline as described there, and obviously, you know, concluding with I'm sure some prioritization and then authorization for removal. But um, in the event that, as I said, if you have a situation that may not be exactly parallel to what you know, occurred this past weekend, but uh, in knowing that there's some funding there, um, I, you know. It would make sense, just as you said, that even though maybe it was, didn't have the same amount of luck that was involved with this one as relative to you know, already having been worked on it, but I just think that that's you know um, an important aspect that you folks have some authorities to to you know to act and act quickly. Recognize you got the Coast Guard and the Army Corps and EPA and local uh, um, you know law enforcement jurisdictions and, and others that are involved in it. So, what well, anyway, a good, very very good work and. Uh, Appreciate the update this evening, and uh, I, would, I just wanted to note. Um, I know some of the commission members know this, but I know that um, I would just want to say, and I think we have some folks on the line. And uh, but Sacramento County, uh, the board of supervisors, uh, we, you know, as do most counties and jurisdictions, have you know, set some legislative priorities, and we certainly thank Assemblyman Fraser and the legislature, and obviously the governor for the funding that was, uh, you know, earmarked and you know. Um, um, Allocated the 12 million, uh, but we, you know, we, I, I'm piggybacking on that. I, I know that our county uh, uh, intends to, I think, working in, in coordination with other Delta counties and and, and, and others to, um, um, you know, seek to maybe get some additional funding, recognizing the magnitude of uh, how big the problem is, and uh, obviously uh, the groundwork's been laid and authorization came some years ago. Now with some money to follow, with more money needed uh, to accomplish the task, but. Uh, I think um, the, the essence of what I wanted to say, though, is that what occurred this past weekend um, certainly proved that the coordination and some of that pre-planning, you know, is advantageous and it's, you know, helped to, you know, get one, one piece of uh, hazardous uh, uh, floating hulk out of, the, out of the Delta and all, all the uh, aspects that it, you know, presented relative to environmental uh, threats and so forth. And so I uh, just wanted to note, though, I know it's part of our legislative platform and our board um in a workshop uh, a week ago uh, you know made it one of our high priorities to be supportive and to work with others to uh, seek additional funding so again thank you to the state lands and to all those involved but anybody else yeah i would just follow up with that and say we appreciate the support i think the money really kind of helps because more people are really focused and interested once the money is available and it does help us to kind of intervene and act because without that money, that wouldn't have happened this week. You know, at least, mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know that we, we would have gotten it somewhere or would have just been put off somewhere else. So it's really important that we got that. And we're hoping that we can prove some successes with this, just like we did this week. And uh, as you said, the, hopefully we can parlay some more sustainable funding long-term so we can address the larger problem. Great. <clears throat> Well, thank you, Commissioner Bush. So, yes, and, and, and money is usually a pretty good catalyst for <laughs> some follow on action. So, good thing. All right. Uh, anyone else? We have uh, one, one last call, Stacey. Any, any uh, hands up by anyone? Yes, Sergeant Epperson would like to speak. 
Sure. Okay, very good. Uh, Sergeant Darren Epperson is with the Sacramento County Sheriff's Marine Detail. So, Darren. Yes, hello, everyone. Can you hear me? I believe so. Yeah, if you guys can hear me, I'm sorry, I couldn't tell. But um, I just wanted to add a couple of things that this last week was a very successful endeavor uh, between multiple agencies. Um, and, and it's a great example of what we can do together. But I just wanted to point out one thing. There are multiple commercial abandoned derelict vessel sites uh, in the county of Sacramento and throughout the Delta and beyond. And I really appreciate the fact that we're you know, going after it to approach this and look at a whole program to deal with it. But I can tell you from experience that uh, time is of the essence and it is not on our side. I've done a lot of recreational ADV removal and some commercial ADV removal. And you don't really don't know what you have until you can actually spend the money to break into it and see what contaminants are inside of it. We had no idea there were 2,000 gallons of fuel on board of that tug until we actually had a paid contractor to go take deck plates apart and search and find the tanks to get it removed. But anytime these things are either floating or stagnant, they're at risk. So there's two types of, of commercial ADV sites. There's emergent sites where a vessel runs aground you know, like the American Challenger on the Marine Coast. And then there's legacy sites like the, the scary tugs. They've been in place for years and they seem benign, but they're really not. And at any point in time, um, at 2000 gallons of fuel, if it would have spilled out right there in seven mile slew or in the San Joaquin River, it would have had a major impact. And so I just want to make the point that time really isn't on our side when it comes to these things. Even the, the crane barges that are sunk Every time there's a high tide and there's two high tides in a 24 hour period, it causes a sheen because the higher water reaches the, the oil that's solidified on the deck and it starts sheening off. So every single day, these sunken barges on the legacy sites are creating a pollution spill, even in a small sense. So the sooner we work on these to get them out, the better. And I just wanna make sure that that point's clear to everyone that time is of the essence on all these sites. And, and again, point out that it was a great effort between a bunch of agencies uh, putting their best foot forward to address this problem. So thank you for the time. Great. Well, thank you, Darren. Thank you for your leadership and work. I know you've been working with colleagues in uh, Delta County and certainly with agencies, state and federal, as well as other local entities. And uh, your work is very much appreciated. And uh, again, thank you for uh, pointing out, I think, some of the daily environmental impacts that can occur with any number of these vessels. So uh, thank you to, to you and for your colleagues for their good work. So anyone else, Stacey? Yes, we have Natasha Drain. I apologize if I didn't pronounce that correctly. Oh, you got it right, Stacey. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Natasha Drain with Sacramento County. I just wanted to uh, oversee government affairs for the county and just wanted to build on what, uh, with what Supervisor Natoli mentioned. Uh, the supervisors on Tuesday will consider their 2022 federal and state legislative priorities. And included in those priorities are two proposals that I think build on the successes mentioned by Commissioner Bush and uh, Vicki Caldwell. Uh, the first is to establish a statewide program to bring federal, state, and local partners together to identify, prioritize, and fully fund the removal of commercial abandoned and derelict vessels. We're continuing to work on that proposal, but we'd like to establish a statewide program. And in addition, we're also asking for a one-time state general fund request of $20 million for the removal of these vessels in the Sacramento San Joaquin Delta. Again, building on that success um, that we got last year of the $12 million. So just wanted to, to note that the specifics of those two proposals. Thank you. Thanks, Natasha. Appreciate that. Thank you for your work. Um, any comments or questions? Of, uh, there are no uh, other hands raised. Okay. Well, sounds like you know good work is proceeding on a number of fronts, and uh, um, again, we're hopeful that uh, we'll continue to build off of the success of the last weekend, but also obviously the funding that's been made available and the work that was outlined. So, um, if there's nothing further, just one more thank you to everyone involved in the past weekend's efforts, but uh, certainly going forward, uh, it's been a long time coming, but uh, I think it'll be, um, uh, you know, uh, well appreciated uh, as we move forward and 
it'll make a difference certainly in the quality of of life for um, Delta residents, the users of the Delta Recreation, and certainly our environment. Uh, no question about that. So, okay. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Bush. Thank you, Vicki, and State Lands Commission staff, and to uh, all those who presented. And Eric, unless there's anything further, uh, I think we can move on to the next item. Nothing further, Mr. Chair, but I do want to mention that Commissioner Birdsong joined us during the DPAC report presentation and I'd like to welcome her. Great. Welcome, Commissioner Birdsong. Thank you. Thank you. I, I apologize for being late. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. And I did get to hear that whole report. It was interesting and a little jaw dropping. All of the laws and regulations you have to jump through to remain, to remove this, this debris from the waterway. <laughs> I would concur the comment. In fact, you have to do an environmental document in order to remove something that's an environmental threat. But I, I, I get it. But <laughs> points well made. Okay. All right. Um, again, thank you. And we'll move on to then to item 10, which is the consideration of the approval of the Great California Delta Trail Master Plan. And we've had some ongoing updates of this the recent commission meetings. And uh, this evening, I think we're going to have uh, Program Manager Virginia Gardner and uh, the Commission Consultant uh, Sophia Zander uh, from Trail People that are going to make a presentation to the commission and put this forward for our consideration. So, uh, Eric, unless you have anything, we'll go to uh, uh, Ms. Gardner. Yep, right to Virginia. Thank you. Thanks, Eric, and good evening, Chairman uh, Natoli and commissioners. We're excited to um, be bringing you this final uh, presentation, which will be very brief. You saw a more lengthy presentation in November, but I'm joined tonight by Sophia Zander and Liz Westbrook with uh, trail people who've been working with us on this plan and are bringing it tonight uh, together with um, trail people's principal planner Randy Anderson produced what I think is an excellent plan. So um, if we can go to our first slide. Um, this is a familiar graphic um, showing top to bottom the progress of the master plan from its legislative birth in 2006 through the various pre-planning efforts and actions that have brought us here tonight to seek your approval and adoption of the California, the Great California Delta Trail Master Plan. Um, just to briefly reaffirm the legislative directive, uh, Senator Tom Torlakson's Senate Bill 1556 called for the commission to develop a plan for a Great California Delta Trail system, a continuous regional recreational corridor extending around the Delta, including the shorelines of five Delta counties. Under the legislation, it's important to note that the commission does not itself develop trails, uh, but we work in partnership with local entities, parks departments, public works departments, special districts, to coordinate planning and implementation across jurisdictional boundaries. Trail segments are conceived, developed, built, and managed by local entities. Uh, so the approach taken in the plan is to provide a framework that lays out important considerations those Delta regional trail planners should take into account. And additionally, it's also intended to help the public understand the goals and strategies for the trail and the range of possible benefits, uh, as well as how they can participate in specific segment um, development. Next slide, please. So there has been frequent outreach to partner agencies and the public throughout this process. The slide just gives you a little by the numbers rundown on um, all the outreach and participation. Um, we included targeted outreach to levy managers and ongoing coordination with our technical and stakeholder advisory committees as required by the Delta Trail legislation. Also, we um, included both publicized and informal one-on-one -on -one, uh, listening sessions and meetings with agency representatives and individuals throughout the process. So now I'm going to turn it over to Liz and Sophia, who will quickly walk you through specifically what we changed as a result of the public comment um, in the uh, November release since the November meeting. 
take it away, ladies. Thanks, thanks, Virginia. Um, I appreciate that. I'm Sophia Zander with Trail People and Zander Design. Um, and I'm just gonna swing through the plan real quick with you all and pass it to Liz in a moment. The, um, the overall structure of the plan has not changed since our November presentation. It still includes five chapters uh, with supporting information in the appendices. Since November, however, two new appendices were added. Uh, one is a summary of the November and December public workshops. The other is a summary of the comments received on preliminary plan materials and on the draft plan. In the next few slides, we'll review the changes for each chapter and uh, you're welcome to stop us or we can answer questions at the end. Next slide. So chapter one is where the previously discussed outreach is summarized. Um, however, the November and December outreach is only summarized in appendices I and J. There were no major changes to, chap made to chapter one since November, other than a few minor uh, text corrections. Next slide. Chapter two is where we paired existing conditions maps with an expanded des description of the existing conditions, opportunities, and constraints. Additional language was added in a few sections of chapter two to clarify protection of agricultural operations and sensitive habitat, and to add references to human powered operation, uh, human powered watercraft, BCDC jurisdiction, the Delta Stewardship Council, Caltrans's new complete streets policy, and limiting pesticide use. A few figure, figure numbers and other text corrections were made. Next slide. Uh, chapter three is where we introduce the four trail types, uh, mail, the main trail, the local access trails, the water launch sites, and finally the adventure hubs. Since November, in this chapter, we have added text for the future consideration of a Delta water trail master plan. We further discuss the connection between the land trail and the water launch sites. We changed the color of the planned bikeway, bikeways on the regional maps to improve readability and further clarified protection of agricultural uses and sensitive wildlife areas. A few other uh, typos and text corrections were made. Next slide. So chapter three includes these four regional maps of the study area showing the specific location of the recommendations. This first map shows the Western region which is the gateway between the Delta and the Bay Area. Only minor uh, edits were made to these four regional maps, um, in, in particular this one, including changing the color of the planned and uh, existing bike lanes, as mentioned, and clarifying the source of the planned facilities that are shown on the maps. Next slide. The Northern region shown here is the gateway between the Delta and Sacramento and West Sacramento. In this region, we strengthened recommendations that any study of the Isleton Stone Lake Trail should coordinate closely with agricultural operators near Lost Slough and Snodgrass Slough and with wildlife preserve managers at the Stone Lakes Wildlife Refuge. I'm gonna hand it over now to Liz, my colleague, Liz Westbrook, who's gonna discuss the remainder of the plan. Great, uh, thanks Sophia. Um, and I'm kicking it off with the central region, um, which is the heart of the Delta and includes five legacy communities, numerous cultural destinations, a handful of local trails, but no designated Delta trail segments. The prior slides comment uh, about the St Isleton Stone Lake Trail coordination applies to this region as well, which is where the uh, Snod grass and lost sloughs are located. Uh, finally, the southern region, um, the last map, um, which covers uh, southeastern Contra Costa County all the way to Stockton, um, Tracy, and Lathrop. This region includes several local trail systems, um, but there are also no Delta Trail designations. There were no change changes to this region um, other than the minor edits that have been mentioned, um, such as changing the uh, existing bike lane colors and the clarifying the source of the planned facilities. Um, so in chapter four, uh, this is where the plan um, includes guidance on trail design elements, 
what the trail might look like on the ground. There, were, there was language added regarding agricultural impacts and sensitive habitat areas. There were other minor edits um, corrected as well. In chapter five, uh, the plan discusses ways to make progress towards a connected Delta trail network and delves into the process of new trail development. It also recommends lead agencies or organizations for each step. There were no major changes to chapter five since November other than a few typo and text corrections. So um, as we mentioned earlier, we have added two new appendices that summarize the public draft outreach and comments in November and December that just wrapped up. Um, Appendix I includes results from our public outreach presentations and the brainstorming about future work on the adventure hubs. Appendix J um, describes how and where in the document uh, we responded to public and agency comments. Um, now I will pass it back to Virginia to uh, close the presentation. Thank you, Liz. In conclusion, I really appreciate your attention. Um, I wanted to acknowledge, uh, you see three names here, but there's been a legion of um, people work, that have worked on this, including our uh, stakeholder advisory committee and te technical advisory committees, uh, all the public input, and um, several former commission planners, including Adele Lagomarsino, um, Ray Costantino, um, Jeremy Terhune, and uh, I believe Alex Westfall, Westfall. So um, the document is the product of many years and many contributors, both public, private, and nonprofit from throughout the Delta. And we're just the most recent stewards that have had our hands on this. So now we're delivering it into your hands for, we hope, um, approval, and we will then proceed with implementation. Thanks very much. Well, thank you, Virginia. Thank you, Liz and Sophia. And certainly uh, thank you to all those who've worked on it, both the uh, past and present. So it is before the commission this evening for our consideration and uh, uh, action. And so with that, um, thanks to you, Virginia, for your leadership here to get it to us this evening. And uh, let me turn to commissioners. Uh, questions or comments? There are no hands raised. Well, all right. Uh, then members of the public, Stacey, any member of the public? I am showing no hands from the public. Okay. Um, well, then you've covered it pretty thoroughly. And unless there are any comments and uh, or other, any questions, uh, then just before our consideration for action. So I would uh, go to the commission for uh, um, a motion. I would move approval. This is Viegas. Christy Birdsong, I second. All right, so moved by Viegas, seconded by Birdsong uh, to approve the plan uh, as uh, presented and certainly with nobody in all the uh, comments by staff that uh, called out the uh, modifications and additions to the plan. And um, with nothing further then, let's go ahead and call for the vote. So Stacy, go ahead. Thank you. Chair Natoli. Aye. Vice Chair Wynn. Yes. Commissioner Viegas. Yes. Commissioner Burgess. Yes. Commissioner Fuller. <laughs> Commissioner Steele. Yes. Commissioner Nakanishi. Yes. Commissioner Paroli? Yes. Commissioner Slater? Yes. Excuse me. Commissioner Agar? Yes. Commissioner Birdsong? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Vogel? Yes. Commissioner Bush? Commissioner Bush? Actually, uh, uh, I believe Commissioner Bush 
indicated he would have to leave the meeting, so. Okay, thank you. Chair Natoli, we have 13 yeses, zero noes, and zero abstains. Very good. Well, congratulations to all who worked on the plan. Uh, a lot of work lies ahead, but uh, milestone uh, uh, vote here this evening. And uh, again, um, appreciate the effort and uh, all that went into it and all that will come out and come out of it because of the good work. So, and thank you to all the public engagement as well. All righty. Well, Eric in Virginia, thank you again. So, okay. Kudos. Moving down to our next item, uh, I know we're running just a little bit a little behind schedule here, item 11, which is the report uh, on the Delta Drought Response Pilot Program. And I know there's been some announcements here in recent days, and we're pleased to have with us our uh, Executive Director from the uh, Delta Conservancy, uh, Mr. Campbell Ingram. And I don't know if there's any opening comments, Eric, and if not, we'll go to uh, Campbell for a presentation on the uh, work that lies ahead here. Great. Well. Sorry, Eric, did you want to say something? No, please go ahead, Campbell. And just to let you all know, I'm trying to open my video, but it will not allow me to do that. Campbell, this is Stacy. We've been having some video issues, so okay. you probably are not going to be able to at this point. Just wanted time. people to know that I wasn't afraid to show my face. So thank you, <laughs> Chair uh, Natoli and commissioners. It's great to be here with you tonight. It's really wonderful to see the progress on the Great Delta Trail and the abandoned vessel efforts. Uh, very glad I got to sit in on that. Uh, I'm going to provide you a brief overview of the Delta Drought Response Pilot Program. And uh, as uh, Chair Natoli mentioned, we're very happy to have been able to launch that pilot program on Wednesday of this week. So it is up and running and fully functional. Um, the, the objective of the program really is to reduce drought stress in the Delta watershed and protect Delta water quality and improve our mutual understanding of agricultural practices and water conservation opportunities in the different regions in the Delta that we can employ uh, now in our current drought or into the future for future droughts, to better be able to respond to drought. Um, the background of the program is, has you know, really stemmed from lengthy conversations with the Delta Water Master and the Department of Water Resources and a Delta team that was made up of members from the Delta Water Agencies as well as some uh, individual agricultural uh, the, the Delta Conservancy was brought in fairly late in the process as the organization to help actually run the grant program, and we're very happy to be able to come in and support this effort. And essentially what we have done is developed an interagency agreement with the Department of Water Resources to transfer $10 million of general fund, specifically identified for drought response in the last budget um, process, to implement this program. So ultimately what the program will do, it's offering $900 per enrolled acre. And the practices that we anticipate funding are things like land following, um, obviously with trying to ensure that weeds are managed so that there actually is a reduction in consumer use. Um, any sort of irrigation efficiencies that can be employed and then crop shifting to crops that have less, um, less consumptive, uh, uh, consume less water. Uh, and then also any other practices that ultimately could reduce um, consumptive use of water in the Delta. The program will have a very robust science and monitoring program. Um, we'll have a subcontract with the University of California Davis, a group, and we will very carefully try to monitor and better understand exactly what is being achieved by these practices and measure both the baseline and the amount of water that can be um, uh, saved. And that, again, will help us identify how, how to run a program in the future um, to best manage drought in the Delta. There's also a very strong commitment to complete open sharing of all the data and all the information that is generated from this project. And there will be a report out um, in the end that will uh, enumerate everything that was learned and how the project was, was um, conducted. Very happy to say that as of uh, this meeting, we already have six applicants proposing nine different um, practices on, on various lands in the Delta. And um, tomorrow morning, we have the first meeting of our selection committee, and um, they will begin to review those proposals and reach out to the applicants to, to you know, refine 
um, the requests and better understand what we think the baselines are and what the estimated consumptive use savings might be. Um, just so you're aware, that selection panel will include members from the Department of Water Resources, Delta Water Master, ourselves, um, US, University of California Agricultural and Natural Resources um, advisors, uh, California Department of Food and Agriculture, and then uh, an, agri an ag economist from UC Merced. So we are anticipating trying to move this funding in this water year, and so we're hoping for lots of proposals. You can find all the information about the process to include what we hope is a very succinct application form, um, interactive application form on our website, deltaconservancy.ca.gov. And uh, we would greatly appreciate any efforts that you all can, can do in getting the word out to make sure people understand and know that this program is available. So with that, I'll thank you again and uh, happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Campbell. Okay, uh, commission members, uh, questions, comments? There are currently no hands raised. Okay. Um, we have Commissioner Vogel. Any? Go ahead, Commissioner Vogel. Oh, thank you, sorry. I tried to put on my video and it doesn't work either. No surprise there. I just wanted to say thanks to all the individual growers and the board members from the North and Central and South Delta that worked with the Delta Water Master and DWR to get us to this point. There was just a huge amount of um, great cooperation and education about the how different each area within the Delta is when it comes to use of water and crops and the potential for water conservation. And um, everybody was just incredibly cooperative. And thank you. Yeah, thank you for adding that, Commissioner Bobo. Thanks, Nancy. Uh, any other commission member? No, there are no hands raised. Okay, I, I would just note too. I think uh, Campbell, as you pointed out, certainly the, you know, the follow-on that will, you know, uh, certainly I think uh, track the participation and you know uh, the success of the program. Uh, from time to time, uh, you know, some of us have the good fortune of ser serving in the conservancy, but it may be that um, I know you're welcome at any of our meetings, but some update as to enrolled acres and, as you said, some of the proposals that are, uh, you know, being considered for funding, but obviously some of those will be funded and, uh, you know, some of that evaluation and obviously the work right now is getting, you know, <clears throat> getting folks enrolled and applications uh, reviewed, but we certainly welcome you back. Uh, at uh, future commission meetings to uh, keep us apprised of, um, you know, how things are going and uh, hopefully uh, how they're, uh, uh, you know, affecting, uh, you know, some of the water conservation efforts uh, during drought, but I think ongoing, uh, whatever the uh, period that we're in as relates to uh, precipitation. So we, again, thank you to the conservative members and thank you, Nancy, for pointing out, uh, uh, you know, what it took just to get to this point. So uh, we look forward to hopefully uh, some recounting of the successes and welcome you back, uh, Campbell, at any time. Absolutely. Thank you, Chair Natoli, and happy to provide updates as we move forward. Okay. All right. And if we have no members of the public, uh, this was an information item, uh, but we certainly appreciate uh, sharing with us this evening. So um, a lot of work lies ahead. Okay, then uh, that being further, we'll move to item number 12, which is the uh, consideration of the Delta Protection Commission's uh, annual report for 2021. And Eric's gonna provide a few highlights and then we'll have this for board uh, consideration this evening. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, and first off, yeah, first off, I wanna give a big thank you to Stacy Hayden for her work and uh, collating all of the contributions into the report uh, the draft report that's in your meeting packet. This is a required uh, annual submittal to the legislature and the governor. I did want to highlight very briefly just a few highlights that are included in this report. It's always a great opportunity to take a look back and see what we've done most recently. Uh, some of the highlights include, uh, wow, I'm really washed out on that screen, tracking the Delta conveyance project and coordinating the participation in section 106, 
uh, working with local partners to submit a nearly $4 million broadband infrastructure grant for the interior Delta. Uh, the commission's approval of the recreation and tourism chapter update to the economic sustainability plan. Uh, the work on the Great Delta Trail master plan, which of course just uh, culminated in your approval and advancing the work on the National Heritage Area Management Plan. We're gonna hear about that in a moment. And finally, uh, www.deltafloodready.com, the flood preparedness website that uh, you, you were all very uh, complimentary on the last time we met. So those are just a few of the highlights that I wanted to mention. I am seeking the commission's approval of the draft 2021 annual report. Upon your approval, we'll finalize that if there are any changes to be made, we'll incorporate those and then we'll uh, distribute it to the governor and the legislature. Okay, thank you, Eric. Um, turn to commission members, uh, this is the opportunity if there's any suggestions for any modifications or additions or uh, any adjustments, uh, this is now the time and, and uh, or any other comments you have on the uh, presentation of the annual report. There are currently no hands raised. Okay, currently no hands raised on it. Um, how about members of the, if we can, can we go to the public then, any members of the public? And there are no public hands raised either. Okay, all right. Uh, unless there's any suggestions uh, for any modifications, uh, then uh, motion would be in order for the annual, adoption of the annual plan to then transmit to the governor and the legislature. Motion. Slater moves. Thank you, Tom. Fergus second. Okay. So motion by Slater, uh, second by Burgess to uh, approve the annual report. And uh, nothing further, then I'll call on our clerk to call the roll. Thank you. Chair Natoli. Aye. Vice Chair Wynn. Yes. Commissioner Viegas? Yes. Commissioner Burgess? Yes. Commissioner Fuller? Aye. Commissioner Steele? Commissioner Steele? Commissioner Nakanishi? Yes. I do see Commissioner still is still on the line with us. So we'll come back around at the end. Commissioner Paroli. Yes. That, that was Commissioner Steele who just voted yes. Okay, so we have Commissioner Steele, Commissioner Paroli. Yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner <laughs> Slater. Aye. Commissioner Agar? Yes. Commissioner Birdsong? Yes. Commissioner Vogel? Yes. Thank you. Chair Natoli, that is 12 yeses, zero noes, and zero abstains. And I do want to note for the record that on the last vote, I mentioned there was 13 yeses. It was also 12. Okay. Well, thank you, Stacy. Thank you for being so diligent in helping the uh, call and collect the roll and uh, announcing the votes. And thank you for your work on the, the annual report. I know Eric noted it, but uh, appreciate the effort that uh, you put forward to bring it to us. And you got a unanimous vote out of it. So we're good to go. All right. With that, then we'll move to, again, thanks to all. Uh, item 13, which is the report on the Delta National Heritage Area 2022 activities and uh, plans for the ongoing work this year. And we'll turn uh, to uh, the program manager, Blake Roberts, unless uh, Eric has any comments in advance. Nope, right on to Blake, thank you. Okay, good evening, Chair Natoli and members of the commission. Uh, as uh, Chair Natoli mentioned, my name is Blake Roberts and I'm a program manager one with the commission. 
and coordinator for the Sacramento San Joaquin Delta National Heritage Area. Tonight, I will provide an update on the National Heritage Area Program and the 2022 management plan schedule. Our work over the last year has concentrated on the overall direction of the management plan, and now we are shifting to assembling the different part, uh, plan components. We anticipate preparing, sorry, play up. too many things going on at the same time, so uh, let me uh, shift to the next. Um, we anticipate preparing eight sections. Uh, the introduction will provide background on the creation of the Delta National Heritage Area and set the stage for subsequent sections. The foundation statement establishes the main tenets of the National Heritage Area, in, including the mission statement and, and vision statements, central stories of the region, and a brief introduction to the plan's goals and strategies. After, after providing a historic overview, management plan will then go into depth about the recommended work of the National Heritage Area and its partners in the goals and strategy section. The interpretive plan describes the interpretive themes, the stories the National Heritage Area will tell, what places best tell these stories, and what best methods to use to tell the stories. The resource inventory identifies the places that make the Delta and Carquinez Strait a unique area worthy of recognition, including historic building and buildings and districts, agricultural landscapes, levees, and natural environments. The partnership plan is a critical part of the management plan because different partners, such as government agencies, nonprofits, and businesses will be essential to implementing the work of the plan. Finally, the business plan and implementation plan will describe how the National Heritage Area will operate in a sustainable way and what steps are needed to make the plan a reality. Prior to our creation in 2019, the last National Heritage Areas to be designated by Congress were in 2009. The National Park Service has recommended that we use several management plans from the class of 2009 as models for our work. The Baltimore National Heritage Area encompasses Baltimore, Maryland, and therefore is very urban. South Park National Heritage Area in Colorado, on the other hand, is very rural. The Delta National Heritage Area has a mixture of urban, suburban, and rural settings, and so these plans are helpful in describing the region. Carolyn Brackett, one of the consultants who worked on the Mississippi Delta National Heritage Area Management Plan, is working on ours and will use her experience from that plan when developing components like the business and partnership plans. Commission staff members are conducting outreach on the management plan through a variety of methods. The commission appointed the National Heritage Advisory Committee in 2020 to guide the preparation of the plan. Committee members and subject matter experts sit on four task groups, heritage and development and tourism, interpretive planning, organization, and resource stewardship to examine management plan issues in more depth. Commission staff have engaged with tribes through formal and informal means, including having representatives of three local tribes on our advisory committee. There's also outreach to the public through workshops and upcoming surveys. Once portions of the management plan are ready for review, we will solicit feedback from the National Heritage Area Advisory Committee, Commission, uh, National Heritage Area Subcommittee, the full commission, the public and National Park Service. Our legislation requires submission of the completed plan to the Secretary of Interior for final approval. The National Heritage Area Advisory Committee has met six times in the last year. All four task groups have met at least once, though most have met more often. We held two public workshops in Benicia and Walnut Grove in August and hosted the Delta Heritage Forum online in November. We had a formal tribal consultation with one tribe and are continuing to follow up with other tribes in the region. As we conduct this public outreach, we are putting together parts of the management plan. During the first three months of 2022, we are continuing our work on the National Heritage Area Advisory Committee and task groups. The four task groups will meet in January and February our next advisory committee meeting will be in, on Thursday, March 3rd. We had scheduled a February 3rd meeting, but that will be canceled. These meetings will help formulate the vision and mission statements, goals and strategies, interpretive plan and business plan. There will also be interviews with the regional stakeholders to discuss potential partnerships. Given the importance of the management plan, goals and strategies, we are planning a meeting with the committee, National Heritage Area, a subcommittee in April and an agenda item for the May Commission meeting to receive feedback. 
We will also work with the National Heritage Area Advisory Committee and task groups to prepare additional sections of the plan. Based on National Park Service guidance, we are expecting to prepare a categorical, categorical exemption on the federal level and a notice of exemption for our CEQA compliance. In July and August, we will be assembling the different sections into a draft plan that can be presented to the commission at your September meeting. We also coordinate with the National Park Service by sharing sections. After commission approval, we will release the management plan environmental document for public review. In November, we will close the public review period and return the plan environmental document to the commission for final approval. The final step at the end of 2022 will be the submission of the management plan to the National Park Service. Eventually, the document will receive final review by his designee of the Secretary of the Interior. As you can see, it will be a busy 2022 but we're hopeful that we will have a management plan to guide our work soon. Thank you so much for your time. I'm happy to answer any questions that the commissioners may have. Thank you, Blake. Appreciate the uh, overview of certainly the work that lies ahead and certainly the summary of what uh, has taken place and who's been um, participating and leading the effort thus far. So with that, let me uh, uh, turn to commissioners uh, for questions or comments. There are no hands raised. Okay. Mr. Um, oh, I was going to raise my hand. Sorry, Mr. Chair, this is Viegas. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say thank you to Blake. I, I, I know this is a, a, a I mean, he's, he's been working on this since day one uh, forever. And it's just really gratifying to see him being able to see this all the way through uh, and, uh, you know, accomplish some of the key milestones and actually be in the year where the plan will be submitted to the Secretary of the Interior. That's a that's a huge deal. And so congratulations, I guess, to all of us, but particularly to, to Blake, who's been able to see this all the way through. So thank you. Well, well, well said, yeah. I'm looking forward to the latter part of this year when we can, you know, adopt it. And certainly, uh, Blake, you're, um, you're leading the charge here. So um, yeah, well said, though. Any other commission work? No hands raised. Okay. Members of the public? Yeah, there are no hands raised from the public. Okay. Well, Blake, you've got your work cut out for you, as do those that are, you know, working side by side with you. And certainly your public engagement has been very important in this process. I think to Oscar's point a moment ago, I know going back a number of years ago when this was more conceptual, um, and certainly uh, the input that was received by the commission uh, certainly preceded some of your uh, time with the uh, uh, commission. But, you know, it, once, you know, funding and the uh, pathway was, you know, given clearance for us to prepare the management plan, um, uh, you've taken that charge on, you know, uh, very well. And, they're, you know, <clears throat> I know working hard to execute, um, you know, this to the point of commission's uh, consideration later this year and then submittal to the Department of the Interior. So, um, again, thank you so much. Uh, good report. And unless there's anything else, we'll just take this to the status report, but we'll be seeing more of Blake and uh, the work product here in the months to come. So when would you anticipate, Blake, beyond having before the commission for our consideration, do you think by midsummer you'll have some draft documents that we'll be then commenting on for uh, purpose of actually some adoption consideration in the fall? Yeah, we anticipate probably having something for you to review. Uh, it'll be a, a very preliminary document, but we will have something for you to review probably in May. So, um, okay. but that, that that's really the goals and strategies. The reason we wanted to come to the commission with the goals and strategies is just because you know, that's a critical part of the plan. And we, we just want to make sure that, that we have your sign off before we, we proceed further. Okay, very good. Well, thank you so much. Again, um, won't belabor this is for this evening's purposes, but uh, look forward to seeing you back in the spring and then obviously shooting for the fall for uh, full consideration of the uh, management plan. Very, very important document. All right. Thank you. Then if nothing further, uh, thank you, Blake. And uh, we'll move to our final uh, action item for tonight's agenda and uh, item 14, which is uh, considering approval of a comment letter uh, to the uh, Delta Stewardship Council, uh, which relates to the draft regulations that are uh, would govern the appeals of covered actions under the, the Delta plan. So I know 
Eric and staff have put a lot of work into it. There's a pretty extensive uh, written uh, background on this, uh, along with the draft letter and so on. That Eric uh, make the verbal presentation and then go to commission members and the public for comments and any other um, uh, parties that want to comment on this this evening. So, Eric. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, without going into the entire <clears throat> staff report, but I, it, I think it is important to spend a little bit of time just laying the background for this item because it's an important reminder about uh, the Delta plan and specifically how uh, projects that occur within the Delta must be consistent with it. So, um, projects within the Delta are, are called covered actions and proponents of those projects, and it doesn't matter whether it's a local agency, a state agency, or even a federal agency, they, they provide what are called certifications of consistency, basically saying that their proposed project that they want to do is consistent with the Delta plan, and then laying out the rationale for why it's consistent with the Delta plan. When a covered action uh, certification of consistency is filed, it can be appealed to the Delta Stewardship Council. And uh, to date, there have been a small number of uh, projects that have been appealed to the Delta Stewardship Council. Two of the more prominent <clears throat> examples are uh, California Water Fix, the Delta Tunnels Project, <clears throat> back under Governor Brown. And then more recently, a proposed habitat restoration project uh, at Lookout Slough. So when there is an appeal of a certification of consistency, there's a whole process whereby the Delta Stewardship Council convenes a hearing, they receive information, they ultimately make a determination. And if they determine that a project is not consistent with the Delta plan, they return that project to the agency that proposed it. That's what they call a remand. Um, the Delta Stewardship Council staff in December proposed amendments to their appeal regulations. And this is highlighted on pages two and three of the staff report, the, the particular changes they're recommending to their appeal regulations. Uh, Upon reviewing those appeal proposed appeal regulation changes, uh, your Delta Protection Commission staff felt that there were two areas for us that were important to comment on. The first is how those proposed changes uh, ensure, or maybe where they run short of ensuring that there's workable public involvement process for Delta citizens or frankly, for that matter, anyone concerned about Delta projects. Um, and specifically, the proposed regs include a provision that require that all comments be in writing prior to the hearing and no opportunity for an oral hearing. That's in part what our comments are focused on. The second is to both affirm the meaning, the meaning and intent of a section of code that's in the Delta Protection Act of 1992. It's specifically Public Resources Code Section 29773. And I'll paraphrase here, but it grants the commission the authority to offer recommendations on any matter related to the Delta plan. And we would argue that includes certifications of consistency. And if those comments are deemed feasible, and consistent with the Delta plan, then the council must adopt them. Um, I'll come back to that in the moment. Or I should say, before I uh, say I'll come back to that in a moment, I wanted to mention on that particular point of Public Resources Code 29773, we raised that point in the Lookout Slew appeal proceedings. That was the most recent appeal before the Delta Stewardship Council. Uh, basically arguing that even though some of the points that the commission raised were not raised by appellants, that they should be considered by the Delta Stewardship Council as they went about considering um, the appeal of the certification of consistency. 
Uh, that point was dismissed by the council staff. We feel that was in error. We continue to uh, insist that that provision should guide uh, commission participation in uh, Delta plan appeal proceedings. And that's a second big part of this letter that is attached. Um, I could run through if the commission members would like the about 10 specific areas where we are making particular comments. These are all uh, outlined in greater detail in the attachment to the letter that I'm bringing to the commission and asking for the commission's approval. If approved by the commission, the letter would go out under the chair's signature. Uh, the letter would be addressed to the Delta Stewardship Council chair, uh, Susan Tatayan. And we would, of course, share that letter with commission members. But Mr. Chair, um, I can walk through in greater detail, but those two overall themes of ensuring a workable public involvement process and affirming the meaning and intent of Public Resources Code Section 29773 are really the focus of the letter that we're I'm asking for your approval on this evening. And I, okay. I, will, I will say that we've reviewed that public resource code section uh, provision with our uh, Deputy Attorney General, Carlos Mejia. Um, he could certainly add uh, any comments that he would like to make on that, but we feel uh, very uh, comfortable with our assertion that that provision should be uh, uh, considered and uh, included for any comments that we make to the council, including on Delta plan appeals of certifications of consistency. Well, thank you, Eric. And no, I, I think that was a, a, a good summary and there's a lot of material included. And so I certainly would want to make sure that commission uh, members, if you want, uh, you know, any more verbal presentation around that, certainly this is a time or, you know, any specific questions uh, um, or comments regarding the letter. And I will take public comment here in a moment, but let me ask uh, Eric, as you suggested, uh, Carlos, uh, is there anything you wanted to add to um, uh, Mr. Bink's uh, report? Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, Carlos Mejia here. Uh, I apologize, I'm also not able to start video, so uh, we'll uh, respond uh, just by audio. Uh, no, nothing to add, uh, but certainly if any of the members of the commission have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Carlos, for your review and certainly being available this evening. So um, let me go to commission members then uh, first for uh, questions, uh, clarifications, additional information that you'd like to, you know, again, with the verbal, you know, folks that obviously are uh, following the meeting uh, may or may not have immediate access to uh, the information, but if there's anything we want to get clarified uh, for tonight's purposes, uh, now is the opportunity, so. This is Alan Nakanishi, Lodi. Yes, Alan. go ahead, Alan. Yes, comment. thank you. Yeah. Sure. It, this is it, it, common sense, right? And you, and Eric, you and the attorneys have done a good job. I looked at this issue here, and it's obvious this is what I, I, we'll be supporting this. You got to support this anyway. My, my comment is that it's a, a good letter, and you, what you've done is excellent. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Commissioner Nakanishi. Appreciate your comments and uh, um, you know and your indication of uh, desire to support that this evening. So we'll get to that consideration in a moment. Um, other commissioners? Commissioner Vogel has her hand raised. Sure, go ahead. Commissioner Bowman, Nancy, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I just, um, I, I wanna commend the Delta Stewardship Council for living with its appeals process for a few years, its consistency determination appeals process, and then figuring out where they thought they needed to make adjustments. And to me, that's just good government. But I wanted to ask, and maybe this goes to Council Mejia, is there anything in the proposed amendments from the Delta Stewardship Council that would change the role of the Delta Prote Protection Commission um, it, as it relates to the appeals process. Uh, Commissioner and I, uh, some of, I'm happy to provide a bit of legal interpretation. I think um, some of uh, your question may speak to some policy considerations that I defer to the executive director on. Uh, but in short, in terms of legal effect, uh, as the executive director noted during the lookout slew appeal, 
uh, the council uh, concluded that the uh, commission's comments, uh, because they were not uh, to an issue raised during an appeal, shouldn't be considered. Um, in my view, these regulations uh, certainly uh, create a more specific role for the commission uh, in terms of guaranteeing an opportunity for the commission to provide comments on matters. Uh, I don't think that as a matter of law, it creates uh, or resolves the issue that uh, came up in the lookout slew appeal. Uh, but again, that's more of a policy concern. Uh, and so I defer to the executive director and any other staff on that. Uh, but in terms of our legal effect, the change here is an explicit recognition of an opportunity for the Delta Protection Commission uh, to comment on appeals of covered action. If I may, Chair, just follow up. Go ahead, Nancy. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Thank you. And thank you, Council Mejia. I appreciate that. I, I, I think that the Delta Stewardship Council is simply embedding its current interpretation of the Delta Protection Commission role in these amendments, and it's not changing it. And um, I think what we have here is just a disagreement um, with the, you know, I think the Delta Protection Commission staff disagree with the Stewardship Council's interpretation of its regulation. And for that reason, I'm gonna abstain on this letter. And I, again, commend the Stewardship Council for looking hard at its processes and trying to improve them. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Vogel. Appreciate your comments and certainly the questions as well. So very appropriate. Okay, um, other commissioners? There are no hands raised. Okay. Um, all right, uh, certainly we'll come back one more time um, to commission members. So let's go to uh, members of the public and or other parties. I know certainly Jeff Henderson from the Stewardship Council is was with us and I assume is with us and he may, or others may want to wish, you know, weigh in. So let me go to um, public comment. At the moment, there are no hands raised. All right. Then with that, I'll bring it back to the commission. And uh, uh, Eric, let me ask you, is there anything else you wanted to put forward uh, before I go to the commissioners for a uh, possible motion? has raised his hand, if he'd uh, like to unmute. Yes, he just raised his hand. Okay, all right, so we'll hold on that for a moment. We'll come back to uh, 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 Jeff Henderson, who's member of the Stewardship Council. I know he's been pretty lead, a part of the lead on putting forth the, re the uh, regulations uh, and uh, uh, the guidance on those uh, as it relates to appeals and was very <laughs> very involved in the uh, staff analysis that went into the lookout slew appeal. So uh, Jeff, turn to you. Thank you, can you all hear me? Uh -huh. Yes, I believe so. Oh, good. Okay. Um, I I don't have anything in specific to add to the dialogue this evening. Uh, we very much look forward to these comments from the commission um, and remain in a remain in a posture to be able to kind of work through those comments and and identify resolutions that are beneficial for um, a, a smooth process as we go forward um, with the potential. Uh, changes or potential recommended changes to the appeals procedures. Um, I would note um, these are currently available for public comment, and I believe the deadline for that is March the 7th. I uh, would encourage anyone else who's participating in the meeting um, or observing the meeting to um, identify those changes on our website and, and potentially offer comments as well. We do intend to bring a revised version of these procedures to the council in a workshop setting at the conclusion of this comment period. And we will notice um, that workshop and ensure that we provide the commission with uh, background for that workshop at that time. And, and we do envision that it may be a series of discussions and workshops before the council prior to arriving at um, revised administrative procedures, but it it really has been our intent to learn from the appeals processes that we have been, um, that, that we've been through and identify ways to both 
um, create a more predictable process and, and understandable outcomes, as well as um, really clarify some of the intent behind um, a lot of these provisions. So just with that, I just uh, thank you for your consideration and uh, look forward to further dialogue on these points. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate you being with us this evening. Thank you for your uh, your work at the council level and certainly for your comments this evening. Uh, and I think an important point, uh, the comment period will remain open, uh, as Jeff said, uh, for any member of the public, including obviously this commission uh, to, uh, through March 7th. So, um, all right. Any other hands raised, Stacey? Uh, we do have Commissioner Wynn who would like to speak. Okay, Commissioner Wynn. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just, a, just a brief comment. Uh, I know that you and and, uh, and Oscar served me on, on the Stewardship Council. I know you've had a, a, a front seat in regards to a lot of the, the uh, processes and procedures that have taken place at the council level. Uh, I, I would have to defer to both of you and certainly others that, that have been involved with the Stewardship Council. And certainly, Eric, in regards to you know the uh, the concerns that are expressed in this letter, as to uh, as to um, minimizing or diluting the impact of the of the commission. So, so I I fully support it. I think that uh, irrespective of maybe a disagreement, but I think we need to move forward and state our case, and make sure that uh, down the road somewhere that that uh, hopefully you know these things can be resolved or, or mitigated. So again, I I, I think. Uh, council and certainly uh, Eric and, and all those who are involved in this, I think did an excellent job. And I certainly, it, it sends forth the, an accurate message as to the concerns of the commission itself. Great. Thank you for your comments, Chuck. And, and uh, yeah, I, I would concur with you that staff has analyzed. I appreciate the work both Eric and Carlos have done uh, on this thus far. And I think uh, uh, certainly uh, there's work to lie ahead, uh, certainly experience behind appeals and uh, and yet I think some of the critical issues have been pointed out in the in the, in the uh, draft that's before us and uh, um, so I think it's important for the commission certainly to go on record um, uh, with those concerns and uh, hopefully they'll get addressed uh, as uh, the council uh, forward on, on on this effort but I think it's very important for this commission to weigh in so I would concur with you on that all right any um, any other commissioners? Uh, Commissioner Slater. Okay, uh, Commissioner Slater, Tom. Yeah, well. thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I, I agree. I, I think simply put, the Stewardship Council is uh, attempting or, or sees where these proposed amendments would help their administrative procedures in some manner. And I think it's equally prudent for us to comment on them uh, and, and work through those issues. They have a very difficult job to do, but I, I don't see any problem with supporting this letter, letter and uh, uh, moving forward with a positive vote. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You bet. Thank you, Tom, for your comments. Any other commissioner? Commissioner Villegas. Yes, uh, Commissioner Villegas. Oscar, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I just simply echo what uh, Tom just said. It um, makes all the sense in the world. We need to continue to represent the, the responsibility of the Delta Protection Commission. I think this letter accurately reflects it, uh, given the Delta plan and the importance of it. And so uh, I have no doubt we'll be able to resolve some of the, uh, the outstanding issues. Great. <clears throat> Thank you, Oscar. Any other commissioner? There are no hands raised. Okay, um, then if there's no other hands raised, uh, no other comment, uh, we've heard from commissioners uh, uh, on the matter and uh, certainly the intent of uh, some commission members, but uh, we have a property for us. Uh, before I call, call for a motion, I wanted to ask Eric anything further you wanted to add before I call for a motion. Yeah, I appreciate that, Mr. Chair. Uh, there is one thing, there is a typo in this letter and I'm just going to read what's currently in the letter and I'll tell you where the typo is. It'll be pretty apparent. The, the penultimate paragraph says, our detailed comments on the draft procures are attached. What I meant to say was draft procedures are attached. 
So apologies for that. Everything else stands. And we are getting a little bit ahead with these comments. They, they are not due until March 7th, but this is our only opportunity for a commission meeting to consider them as we will next meet on March uh, 19th, 17th, I'm sorry. So anyway, I, uh, I, I hope the commission will support this, this letter. Okay. All right, noting the uh, corrected uh, text, uh, we do have the draft letter and uh, uh, one more time, welcome any further comments by commission members, otherwise uh, we'll uh, uh, wait for a motion if there's one to come forward. There are no hands raised. Okay, with that then, what's the, what's the pleasure of the commission? And we're gonna make a motion to approve. Right. Alan Nancy, second it. Okay, so we have a mo motion by Wynn, a second by Nakaniki. The motion then is to uh, uh, go forward with the draft. Uh, the commission taking action to approve the draft for submittal uh, to the uh, as, our, as our comments. And that is the motion. Um, if there's no further comments, then uh, go for a vote. Thank you. Please. Chair Natoli. Aye. Vice Chair Wynn. Yes. Commissioner Viegas. Yes. Commissioner Burgess. Yes. Commissioner Fuller. Aye. Commissioner Steele. Aye. Commissioner Nakanishi. Yes. Commissioner Paroli. Yes. Commissioner Slater. Aye. Commissioner Agar. Abstain. Commissioner Birdsong. Abstain. Commissioner Vogel. Abstain. Thank you. Chair Natoli, we have nine yeses, zero noes, and three abstains. Okay, motion carries, and uh, again, certainly with the spirit of, in, of cooperation, uh, we'll, we'll continue to work on the, I mean, as your chair uh, signed the letter, as Mr. Vig said, and uh, carry the message forward on behalf of the commission um, as we continue to work on these matters before the council, so. Yeah, and Mr. Right. Mr. Chair and commission members, uh, every time we have a letter and there's either a split vote or there's abstentions, I will edit the letter to recognize the abstentions from the state agency representatives. So just to let you know, the final version will include the addition of that, a phrase to that effect after it mentions the 903 vote at our commission meeting. Great, thank you for, for the accurate vote and uh, thank you for that, Eric. Okay. Anything further on this item? If not, then we'll move to uh, the final item of the agenda, which is to uh, move to adjourn. We don't need a motion for that. But are there any other, um, just noting that as Eric said a moment ago, March 17th, uh, St. Patrick's Day, our next um, uh, commission meeting looks as though uh, we'll still be in the Zoom format. Um, with the same time noted for the uh, beginning of the meeting. And uh, um, with, uh, with that, any further commission comments before I call the meeting to a close for this evening? There are no hands raised. Okay, I'll take that as a <laughs> affirmation of folks. Uh, we, we covered the agenda, which we have, and I wanna thank my fellow commissioners and all who presented and, and participated this evening, certainly our staff as well for their ongoing work and uh, appreciate the cooperation that has brought us to this evening's meeting. And uh, with that, uh, nothing further coming forward to the meeting. I will adjourn the meeting and we'll see uh, uh, folks back on the uh, 17th of March. And with that, our meeting is adjourned. Mm -hmm.